Like, that's an unhinged thing to say openly. Oh, well, guess what, dude? We could have killed you way harder than the way we're killing currently. How nice. How humanitarian. Thank you. <laughs> I want to get to like the fun stuff, uh, but before I do, we talked about the the bunkers uh, that Israel built. Here, are two things I want to watch: anti-Palestine TikTok from Noah Noah Samson. This is latest more escalation in their ongoing genocide against the Palestinian people. So far, over thirteen thousand Palestinian civilians have been murdered by the Israeli military, including over five thousand children. The actual it's not death fun toll stuff. I'm saying we're going to get the fun New stuff. New estimates from human rights organizations place the number of dead at around twenty thousand, including six thousand four hundred children. And I want to watch. Why Israel was originally attacked as well. Palestinians remain trapped under rubble. Western governments, like the United States, enjoy all of this and want more. Bro went to the only people who hate Jews more than Muslims and was like, you know, love me. Dad, that's the funniest part about it is that like the the Nazi, the neo-Nazi movement in the United States of America is very conflicted right now because both of their enemies are fighting. And some of them hate uh, Jewish people more than they hate Muslims, which is very few. And a lot of them hate Muslims more than they hate Jewish people. Now, it depends on like what seasoning, what layer of hell you belong to as a neo-Nazi. Many people are just like kind of taking advantage of the situation, not really picking sides, but doing pot shots, okay? Doing pot shots at uh, at, at both uh, Jewish people and, and doing that under the auspices of, of um, anti-Zionist sentiment. Genuinely trying to, uh, genuinely trying to level up their clout it's just that uh, there are still a significant number of, like, normal racists who are kind of anti-Semitic, but nowhere near uh, as, as Islamophobic as they are anti-Semitic, right? I'm talking about regular races, not like neo-Nazis. A lot of neo-Nazis go either way, in either direction. But uh, it's, always, it's always interesting to watch uh, and, and uh, you know, take it all in. What the fuck they're doing here. Are you not scared of Judgment Day? No. Of it. The Biden administration continues to vocally and financially support Benjamin Netanyahu's Israel and ignore or censor any government officials brave and bold enough to say, stop doing a genocide, pretty please. The genocide has been covered extensively on social media, and today we're going to look at some of that. The videos and trends that have come from the perpetrator of the genocide, which is pro-Israeli and Zionist accounts. We're going to talk about how the sentiments expressed in these videos tie into the logic of the state of Israel's genocide campaign and what that means in a broader context. And yeah. Okay, let's do it. It is, I think, 1 p.m. We are going to be leaving Ashkelon now because I just don't feel safe here. But the goat, Rabbi Shmuley's daughter who sells kosher sex toys. God, I learned so much about her in the past month that I just did not need to know. Uh, big fan of Drake, or big hater of Drake. Big former fan turned hater of Drake. Rabbi Shmuley Boteach's daughter. But I do want to give you one piece of good news that day and night, every few minutes, sometimes seconds, I can hear our IDF, our incredible army, bombing the living daylights out of Hamas. And it is giving me so much strength. Uh, you can hear, I don't know if you guys can hear now. I hope that they are showing Hamas just this much of the wrath of God, showing them that if you touch. She says she loves hearing the sound of dead children in Gaza that she can hear. Uh, over the hill, you know? It's fucking sick. It's sickening. Uh, what a disgusting, filthy piece of shit she is, of course. A single hair on any Jew's head, we will come and we will bomb you until we just obliterate you from the face of the earth. Hamas is such... She said Hamas? Oh, shit! That's right, she said Hamas. So, at that point, because I remember covering it, I think it was like 2,000 or 3,000 children had died, had been killed by Israel. Uh, she knew that, but she still said, Hamas! So, what does that mean? Oh, I guess she just meant like, oh, they're bombing Hamas in that case. Never mind. Pure evil. Grateful to every single one of our troops for going to the day most dangerous parts in Israel right now and fighting for us. And I could hear Hamas being pulverized, and it's the greatest sound I've ever heard in my life. All right, stay there. No, I'm saying at that point, when she was saying this, it was like 3,000 children. 
Based on what we know about what's actually going on on the ground in Gaza, I think it's safe to assume that the greatest sound she's ever heard in her life is some combination of the screams of Palestinian children, their cries after every single one of their family members have been murdered by the Israeli military, or just bombs dropping on densely populated civilian areas. As freakish as this video might seem, it's actually a fairly standard Zionist perspective. The justification for collective punishment against Palestinians is that, you know, they're all Hamas. We can see this attitude reflected all over the place. Most notably, all Israeli state officials and everything they are constantly saying. The non-combatant uh, population in the Gaza Strip is really a non-existent term because all of the Gazans voted for the Hamas. And as we have seen on the 7th of October, most of the population in the Gaza Strip are Hamas. Some of them excitedly describing what's going on in Gaza as the new Nakba, referencing the 1948 ethnic cleansing of 700,000 Palestinians upon which the state of Israel was founded. This genocide thing is not new, it's just gotten really extreme. Check out this video from John the Duncan to learn more. I'll leave it linked below. We see this attitude reflected in statements from the official social media accounts of Israel. When we say that Hamas must be eliminated, we mean leaders, supporters, and even those who distribute sweets. They are all terrorists. There is no escape from the collapse of Hamas. Flatten the strip. Burn God. By the way, when he's saying that, he's talking about the kids. Like, literally. Because there's a viral video of, like, kids and like random uh, uh, Palestinian civilians like walking up to uh, one of the parades where they have like all of the militias uh, riding through the streets before October 7th. I don't know when exactly it's from. And like walking up, dabbing them up and like giving them sweets. That's what he's talking about. Itamar ben Givir saying like, oh, you give fucking uh, candy to like a, a militant faction, then you deserve death. Okay. Yeah. I think it was like about, I, I think they like put the music behind it too. And yeah, Hamas babies, I'm afraid. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Gaza now, no less. But signing bombs is a wholesome activity. Oh yeah, no, of course. That's valid because you're, you're making your enemies perish. The greatest threat to Israel is, of course, as always, children. Palestinian children. The top of the hour ad break is the greatest threat to you. And Palestinian children is the greatest threat to Israel. <sighs> Eviscerate the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for $5 or free. Here's the ad break now. Right now, one goal, Nakba. A Nakba that will overshadow the Nakba of 48. Nakba in Gaza and Nakba to anyone who dares to join. Erase all of Gaza from the face of the earth. That the Gazan monsters will fly to the southern fence and try to enter Egyptian territory or they will die and their death will be evil. Gaza should be erased. These are all active Israeli politicians and officials. Just straight up admitting it, admitting what they're trying to do. One of the more infamous of these was a since deleted tweet from Netanyahu's account. This is a struggle between the children of light and the children of darkness between humanity and the law of the jungle. The comparison there, as we saw in the TikTok as well, between pure good and pure evil. Hamas is such pure evil. This time with the added touch of comparing all Palestinians to animals. Just yesterday, a video was released by Israeli State TV featuring a bunch of Israeli children singing a song with lines about Gaza like, in another year, there will be nothing here and we will annihilate everyone. Does it get any clearer than that? They got damn Hitler kids bop in here. At the recent March for Israel protest in Washington, D.C., we saw a lot of signs expressing this desire for collective punishment. Let Israel finish the job. Many Gazan civilians are Hamas in training. There is no proportional response to Hamas. The speakers at this rally went similarly mask off. As Prime Minister Netanyahu says so well, this is a fight between good and evil between light and darkness, between civilization and barbarism. Even Netanyahu knew that the tweet openly expressing genocidal intent was not a good look. It's never a good look, is it, saying Hitler stuff? But when you're talking to a big crowd of Zionists, it's a safe space for you to open up and share your Hitlerian feelings. When Israel drops bombs on a car full of innocent women and children, killing all of them, they don't have to apologize, they don't have to take accountability, because they thought the car was a terrorist car, and therefore any- Hey, by the way, uh, almost identical to America. Just a reminder, getting alerts that you're tweeting while listening to a Noah video is kind of a trip. Yeah, I'm always, uh, always ABT, always be tweeting, ABX, always be Xing.
any action taken against it. it By the way, almost identical to uh, America, just a reminder. I mean, we've done it so many fucking times. Uh, the last bombing uh, out of Kabul is another somber reminder of that. You know, it's just America activities right again, there. again, morally pure. This is the logic of genocide. One entire group of people are a threat, dangerous, and in need of expulsion or extermination. There is no proportional response to pure evil, which just blasts the door right open for genocidal intent. Unlike Nazi Germany, however, However, we have TikTok now, and Zionists post videos like this celebrating their genocidal regime without an ounce of self-awareness that everyone can see it. These ideas are leaving the Zionist social media bubbles, and whether or not that will actually mean something in the long run remains to be seen, but it does seem like a lot more people are picking up on just how freakish this ideology is. So just post through it, Zionists. Keep posting. It's uh, You're going to be fine. It's always good PR. You guys are great at PR. A few weeks into the genocide, a video went viral of an Israeli man mocking the lack of water and electricity in Gaza. I don't need to play the full thing, but you get it. You see, very silly. He has water, they don't. He has electricity and TV, and they do not. This is, of course, referencing Israel's blockade on Gaza's resources, which extends past just water to include food, electricity, internet, gas, and Gross, medical supplies. Dude. Throughout the genocide, they have withheld these basic human resources, which is a war crime, but to Zionists like this, it's a funny and good thing to make fun of on Instagram Reels. You should do it. Seriously, do it. I mean it, I'm not kidding. You should stop posting, is what I mean. We can compare this cheeky little meme to literally anything that's going on in Gaza right now as an illustration of the deep inhumanity of the ideology of Zionism. Due to the lack of clean water, we're seeing sickness and mass. Cases of diarrhea have increased 20-fold over average cases in previous months, and it's only going to get worse as public water and sanitation services have begun shutting down as of November 15th. Gazans are being forced to move or drink seawater, and when there's nowhere to go, it's not really a choice here. This video is bad. Obviously, uh, it's bad. It's unhinged. However, um, it's also good. It's good in the sense that it shows Zionists true colors. To them, resources are not a right for yep. Palestinians, but a privilege. One that can be revoked by Israel at any time. That same idea was shared in a viral video from the March for Israel rally last week. Israel controls whether they have water, whether they have electricity. No, no, no. We generously give them they water. Can... We generously give them it's electricity. Their land, it's their land, my dear. It's their land that was taken from them. You know, a lot of enslavers described what they did to the enslaved as being generous. I think that's probably the closest we can get here to a comparison of that word being used in that way. We generously give them they water. They seem like nice ladies, you know, very nice and Yeah, the other the other demonstration of generosity is always uh claiming, well, we could nuke them if we wanted to, but we don't. Like how do you not see that you're being like a Nazi? Like you're insane. You're an insanely violent person. Like that's an unhinged thing to say openly oh well guess what dude we could have killed you way harder than the way we're killing currently how nice how humanitarian thank you and normal ladies Thank you. Prominent American comedian Sarah Silverman shared a post on her Instagram story a few weeks ago justifying these war crimes. Many are saying that it's inhumane that Israel is cutting off water and electricity to Gaza. Israel has made it pretty simple. Release the hostages and we will turn it back on. Israel does not need to supply Gaza with these resources, which they do for free. Oh wow, free. That's... Uh, wonderful. Are the bombs free too? Or is it all on the house? Okay, well, we know it's on the house. It's on, it's on the house. We pay for it. We pay for it with our taxes. It's fucking sick. We pay for it and then we pay for it again. On the houses and apartment buildings. Military targets, not so much. Silverman later backtracked on sharing this message, claiming that she was high when she posted it, which is interesting, you know? I knew weed was strong these days, but I've never seen it turn someone into Hitler. She's smoking Heimlich Hitler. <laughs> Let's look at this argument a little closer though. It's a good Why not? Day. We got time. Return the hostage. She's on that, she's on that loud, dude. Wow, I should have never smoked that shit. Now I'm Heinrich. <laughs> Hempler? Oh, God. Okay, we're... We'll give you back your water. Firstly, uh, the Israeli government has made it clear that they do not actually really care about the hostages. Netanyahu has repeatedly rejected offers for temporary ceasefires in exchange for their return. It's also speculated that multiple Israeli hostages have been killed by their own country's missiles, which is probably part of why the families of many of these hostages are protesting in hopes that their return will be prioritized, many of them explicitly calling for a ceasefire. I think more importantly, though, uh, Hamas holds Holding hostages is no justification for war crimes, which is what that is when you deprive 2 million people of water and other basic human resources. What we see here is that to Zionists, basic human rights are conditional. Conditional upon whether or not
Why is the Hamas leadership worth so many billions, dude? They're getting their fucking money up while you're getting your funny up in the chat, brother. I don't know. Maybe because, like, Netanyahu is giving them fucking bags of cash and shit. And they do, like, real estate and stuff. You know what I mean? It's not It's not good. I don't agree with it. You know, I'm, a, I'm anti-billionaire across the board, right? I think the funniest part of it is, like, that uh, Ismail Haniyev, who's supposed to be, like, the major guy, is literally the biggest broke boy in the crew. Uh, Abbas has more money than he does. I think Abbas is, like, uh, rich, too. The other guys are all rich as fuck. They're in the billions. Meanwhile, broke boy Ismail Haniyev, whose family members are fucking dying inside of Gaza, is the one that has, like, $5 million in net worth, which I don't even know how the fuck that happened. Also, this assumes that you're pro-Hamas, too. It, yeah, I'm, I'm both pro-billionaires and pro-Hamas uh, simultaneously, is what the assumptions that are... That, that, that this guy's operating on. There is no F at the end of Hania's name. Sorry. Hania is worth $4 billion. I've seen that as well. But then I've also seen that uh, Hania is uh, worth uh, $5 million. So I don't know which one it is. You're like a billionaire from panhandling. I suspect that part of the reason why they're fucking rich... Um, part of the reason why they're uh, rich is because, like, they, uh, well, one, they're corrupt as shit, of course, because literally all of these guys are, like, every single one, always, right? That's part of the reason why Israel keeps them alive. Like, think about it this way. The Israeli government has literally executed dudes like, uh, like, uh, uh, dudes in the PFLP that have never actually, like, fought, fired a gun, you know what I mean? For the crime of writing articles okay like think about it that way there are journalists that the that the uh, uh israeli government has killed within the palestinian leadership okay so why the fuck don't they touch any of the hamas leadership for the most part israel literally assassinates iranian scientists in the middle of iraq okay they literally kill a shit ton yeah uh the Ghassan kanafani is who i was thinking of Israel kills a shit ton of babies. Does Israel not know where fucking uh, the, the Hamas leadership is? No, they do. Why did Netanyahu give him bags of fucking cash? Suitcases full of cash. Something to consider. Something to think about. Maybe it's because the Israeli government understands that keeping the Hamas leadership alive is good for them. Because they can just like consistently justify the violent actions and thwart any kind of Palestinian uh, uh, statehood project. By pointing to them and going, look at these fucking terrorists. You're a Palestinian. The only way that this works in their minds is if Palestinians are viewed as subhuman terrorist enablers or terrorists themselves, which, you know, by these people, uh, they are. That's how Sarah and this guy and these ladies and Zionists in general view them as obstacles to their end goal of completing their Zionist colonial. Qatar, where phony are made. Listen, Qatar is... Um... Qatar is a is a space that is dominated by, uh, I would say, American allies. I don't want to get too deep into it, but also, you know, their their existence is also uh, a a part of America's interests. Their existence in the way that they exist is a part of. Uh, uh, American foreign policy colonial project, which is kicking all of them out of the territory that they want, uh, dead or alive. One of the more grim trends to come out in the last month was Israeli influencers mocking Palestinian detainees. The original video is allegedly of blindfolded Palestinian detainees being held captive while a kid's song is playing on repeat in the background, Many Mamtera, which is essentially an Israeli version of Baby Shark. The video was then recreated by Zionist influencers in cars, sometimes including their own children. In some videos, it's unclear whether the Captives are actually Palestinian or just Israelis playing along, but either way, this was a big trend. Israeli national TV hosts thought that it was very funny and good to see this. What's especially sickening about this one is how it ties into reality. Gaza is already an open air prison. Two million people have their movement restricted, resources withheld, and are killed indiscriminately. But beyond this, in terms of active incarceration, things are worse in Gaza than pretty much anywhere in the world. One in every five Palestinians have been arrested, charged, and or imprisoned prison by Israel. This rate doubles for Palestinian men, which is two out of every five. For reference, the United States, which has the largest prison population in the world, has an imprisonment rate of one in 200. Reports of what happens to Palestinians inside of Israeli jails are, well, as bad as you'd expect for Palestinians in Israeli jails. Torture, starvation, mistreatment, everything you can imagine and worse. This imprisonment can happen for things as arbitrary as participating in nonviolent protests or even waving Palestinian flags. 
So it's hard for me, at least, to find the humor in these videos when we know what actually happens to Palestinian detainees. It's a lot like mocking Gazans for their lack of clean water. Israel does something evil. They withhold the resources. They use their occupying forces to imprison Palestinians indiscriminately. These acts then worsen the conditions for Palestinian people, often to the brink of death. And then Zionists make fun of them for being in those worsened conditions. Fellas, you created the conditions under which they are suffering. What are you doing? What are you doing making these videos? Why? There is a constant stream of genocide denial going on right now, and it's not limited to the President of the United States dismissing the death count statistics from the independently verified Gaza Health Ministry. It's like, before we forget, lest we forget, when you look at the guy like Stewart, Mr. Stewart being incredibly Islamophobic, like incredibly Islamophobic, Remember that the motherfucking president, okay, the quote-unquote leader of the free world, went on the national stage and straight up said, I can't trust the numbers coming out of the Gazan Health Ministry because they're Hamas-backed. And once he said that, a pivot occurred. Every single outlet in unison started reporting Hamas-backed Gazan Health Ministry. Hamas-backed Gazan Health Ministry. Diminishing their long-standing track record of accurately reporting the death toll in the eyes of the broader majority of Americans who don't necessarily pay attention to this stuff closely. There are still people in this chat that come in here a month later and turn around and go, uh, why, how do we know the Gaza Health Ministry numbers are real? Because they're Hamas. Or even try to do this like weird false equivalence. Like, well, the IDF lies about everything. Sure, fine. Even though I agree with them secretly. But... So does Hamas. Why do you trust Hamas? Why do you trust Hamas numbers? It seems like you're anti-Semitic. It seems like you want babies to be beheaded. Fucking ridiculous. Disgusting. You gotta look at the track record, dog. Look at the track record. The Gaza Health Ministry's numbers have been cross-verified time and time again, and they have been reliable, consistent. The IDF's track record is the exact opposite. Speaking of beheaded babies, remember, yeah, the 40 beheaded babies. That was a story that blew the fuck up. What happened to that story? Huh. <sighs> It's also on TikTok. Eve Cohen here is just doing a makeup tutorial mocking the mothers of dead Palestinian children. TikTok has so much stuff on it. Wow, thanks TikTok. It's always wild to me how if you give Zionists the opportunity to speak, you can kind of count down the seconds on one hand until they start doing Hitler shit. The implication here is that Gaza is full of crisis actors, hoping to garner Western sympathy and bolster pro-Hamas media coverage by faking the deaths of their children. Now, this video and the idea it presents is obviously repulsive and dishonest. There's no shortage of footage of the death, destruction, and mutilation that Israel's genocide campaign has wrought on Palestinians. But, as with all of these examples, this is not some isolated incident. There's been multiple instances of Zionist media circles sharing videos of Palestinian people filming scenes of death and injury. These are framed by Zionists as crisis acting and evidence that things are not as bad for Palestinians as they might seem. In reality, though, all of these videos are real. They're just behind-the-scenes footage taken during, uh, for example, the film filming of Palestinian short films or of medical educational content. Another notable example of this is the Palestinian activist Saleh al jafarawi This widely shared image of him playing all his quote-unquote roles has prompted more Zionist accusations of crisis acting. Hollywood, as they call it. But it is, again, very easily... Dude, it is like... Dude, that is the most Hitlerian shit, okay? The Pallywood shit is so utterly Hitlerian. It, it, it's just like, straight up, dude. Straight up. If... Nazis had fucking TikTok. That's exactly what they'd be doing. Exactly. They did similar things in Nazi Germany while hiding their atrocities. They did. Straight up. That level of gaslighting is so unimaginably evil. Like, it, it is, is, is insane debunkable. Every one of these images has verifiable context. They were either taken long before October 7th, not actually him, or just footage of him doing real things in the world. Crisis acting accusations like this are a form of genocide denial. Because to make such a- Yeah, Pallywood was a response to Mohammed al-Dura in 2000, where in front of French cameras, the Israeli occupying force executed the child of a father by directly shooting him with live fire like a like a little baby and they did it in front of the european press that is when the pallywood conspiracy started when they were like oh these are telegenically dead babies these are I mean, these are children that are dying in front of the cameras on purpose or maybe even they're fake you're a complete idiot attacking israel for defending themselves straight up dude coming from the main gaslighter brother i'm gonna keep it a buck 50 with you 
Israel does not have a right to defend itself during a belligerent occupation. They do not. Under international law, the Israeli government and the occupying force does not have a right to defend itself. Okay? Take off the mask, man. Train is probably way smarter than you with his two degrees. I don't know if you know this, but this isn't defense. This is offense. This is an ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement campaign. That's it. I have been killed and... Oops, wrong video. Accusations is to ignore or lie about the statistics or seemingly endless amounts of footage of the death and destruction caused by Zionist terrorism. The spread of this kind of misinformation... Bro, I'm getting ads on Twitter specifically addressing you. Wait, what? What are the ads? The fuck? is just one more way to sustain and rationalize their logic of genocide. There's a saying that's used- They called you anti-American and a radical Islamist? Please show me the fucking ad, dog. That's so funny. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's the Hamas piker shit. Dude bought ads, I think. Dude, that is the most racist, psychotic nonsense you can ever fucking arrive at. Holy moly, dude. What the fuck? And there's literally nothing I can do about it, by the way. There's no recourse. There is no fucking recourse for it. There is nothing. I can't say, I can't do anything for it. The Wikipedia and Hitler community is going wild. Yeah. It's quite frequently when talking about Zionists, which is every accusation is a confession, which I think fits nicely with our next example paired with the previous ones. A video of what was allegedly a Palestinian nurse sheltering in fear of Hamas inside of Al Shifa hospital went viral. It was shared widely by Zionist social media accounts and the video is fake. There are a number of elements to this video that betray its inauthenticity. The explosions you can hear in the back of the video are sound effects as shown in a technical examination of the waveform audio. The world has to know has to know what Hamas is making here. They're taking over the entire hospital. They're taking over the fuel, the medicine. I have nothing to treat with. I had to fix a fracture. The woman filming has an Israeli accent and fails to conceal it in her mispronunciation of certain Arabic syllables. Additionally, according to Al Shifa doctors, they don't use red stethoscopes in the Al Shifa hospital where this person claims to have been working. And a number of those doctors and workers have come forward to say that they've never seen her in all of their time working at Al Shifa. Also, just listen to what she's saying, the idea she puts forth that Hamas is stealing fuel from the hospital. What fuel? There's no fuel. Israel cut the fuel off, which is a war crime, by the way. This killed multiple ICU patients, including a number of premature babies. This is crisis acting. And the aim of this deception is to astroturf justifications for Israel's war crimes. In this case, the raid on Al Shifa hospital. This sort of content pairs nicely with official IDF propaganda, like the 3D renders of massive Hamas tunnel networks underneath Al Shifa hospital, which were of course unsubstantiated and ultimately proven false by the IDF's own footage, or attempting to depict the raid as humanitarian and helpful, actually, by doing a photo op of them unloading boxes labeled medical supplies to Al Shifa. Notice how light the boxes are and how they are labeled in English. They think that Western Zionists are the stupidest people on the planet. And to be honest, they might have a point because people ate this shit up. Official IDF propaganda is deserving of its own video to be sure. Uh, but the thing I'm trying to get at here is, I guess, um, don't trust anything you hear when people are trying to defend a genocide which is what Zionists are trying to do right now. Whether it's official state media or good old fashioned homegrown TikTok content. The nurse video might be some combination of both, uh, but we don't know yet and time will tell. Hey, what's up? Editor Noah here. I wanna add a brief clarification to that last point, which is that you should be skeptical of everything you read, uh, especially on the internet. Israel's genocidal intent does not somehow excuse misinformation from any other side of the conflict. However, and as I go into right after this, the Western media apparatus is streamlined to show extreme skepticism towards Palestinian claims, while at the same time spreading Israeli government propaganda with a serious lack of scrutiny. It's only until recent weeks that we've seen Western interviewers actually press Israeli officials on their genocidal claims. For so long, these claims just went uncontested. And if you're used to seeing this dynamic, it takes a certain vigilance to parse through how these perspectives are treated differently. There are plenty of reasons for this, but you know, a major one is that the United States and Israel are allies. So they have 
have a vested geopolitical interest in depicting one another's crimes as justified. Western outlets will very often repeat such claims without stressing the point that they originate from the IDF, the same IDF that has a long history of fabricating claims to justify killing Palestinians, and the same IDF that needs the support of Western media to carry out this genocide with impunity. All right, so the last trend I wanted to mention today is the red triangle videos. This trend originates from videos posted by Hamas showing a red triangle pop up over IDF military targets like tanks before they are fired upon by Hamas resistance fighters. The red triangle is represented in the Palestinian flag and various other Palestinian resistance symbols. But just as they love to do to Palestinian land, Israel stole this trend and used it with their own <laughs> combat footage. As many have pointed out though, uh, this trend doesn't really hit the same when we understand the reality of this genocide, which is that for the IDF, the triangles are not popping up over military targets, but over Gazan hospitals, refugee and and also just like overall houses and stuff like just never an enemy combatant i have yet to see a single fucking video from the israeli side that shows them that with the exception of the one drone video that i mentioned there are some drone videos where you can see like you know live ammunition like people sh shooting out of a building that inevitably gets uh destroyed but i have yet to see any fucking real-time combat footage from the idf of like the actual Israeli occupying force taking it to the goddamn streets and like fighting uh, any kind of militancy on the ground. The only time I see the IDF actually in combat is when I see Al Qassam Brigade videos that circulate on Telegram and make its way to fucking Twitter where they're getting blasted by some fucking dudes wearing Abibas fake ass tracksuits with a with a fucking sniper rifle that they got from like 1978 in their goddamn flip-flops coming out of fucking tunnel systems. That's the only time I see like any kind of combat between uh, uh, the Israeli occupying force and, and uh, a, a Palestinian militia. Only time. I've never, I haven't seen it. Like I, the, the one that the IDF posted recently is them just fucking opening up fire, like unloading into like a, a, a wooden table at a school, like an emptied out school, okay? Ridiculous. Uh, hey, guys, don't post this fucking link, okay? Get the fuck out of here. It's got, it's got zero fucking likes, please. Camps, apartment buildings, and children. How do you do, fellow crimes against humanity enjoyers? Says Israel so coolly and hiply. I also want to note that the contrast between these two types of videos is pretty incredible. Hamas fighters are running up next to these tanks and soloing them, basically. They're firing handheld rockets from the ruins of the buildings that Israel destroyed. The IDF, meanwhile, fires from afar and from above. And as we continue to see, their targets are vastly disproportionately civilians, including specifically targeted attacks towards journalists that are reporting on their war crimes. In looking at all this content today, I hope it's clear that these viral videos aren't outliers. They're not just getting dunked on for their depravity. They are examples of the causes and effects of Zionist ideology. The endorsement and celebration of collectively punishing the Palestinian people, the mockery of their destitution, the denial of genocide in various forms, and the co-opting of resistance symbols as propaganda for the West. This is all content, yes, but it's also a reflection of reality. This is what the state of Israel is telling you that they want over and over and i hope that it, it all plays along with hamas are barbaric violent monsters all of their actions are barbaric they are only acting out in a genocidal desire to kill all jews and not just all jews but the entirety of the western world all so that you do not think that like these these actions on october 7th which were ruthless and barbaric in many instances uh came out of nowhere it was completely unsuspected it just, it just was unprovoked, unimaginable, unprovoked, definitely not a consequence of maintaining an apartheid. Do not ever say that. That is anti-Semitic, you know? I know this is a terrible time to say this, but you're so fucking hot, bro. I just had to put it out there. Thank you, man. That's very nice of you to say in the middle of my ongoing coverage of an ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement campaign.
Yeah, I saw the racist dude who's were harassing the food vendor. We talked examining about the links between content from people and official state policy might help some people see that, but I, uh, but I don't know. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Across the globe, we've seen record numbers at protests in support of Palestine, in support of a ceasefire. Boycotts are being done. Armed shipments to Israel are being blocked. Politicians unwilling to call for a ceasefire are being shouted down at IHOP or wherever they're eating dinner. Many such protests have been led by anti-Zionist Jewish groups, which is one efficient way to dispel the notion that criticizing Israel is inherently anti-Semitic. Even as we looked at, family members of the Israelis currently being held hostage by Hamas want the bloodshed to stop and for negotiations to happen without bombs being dropped. But these guys don't, and until they do, this will continue. So what can we do about this? Well, a good start would be uh, anything. The first link below will be a Google Doc from the video essayist Dr. Fatima that has a lot of great links on people to follow, resources for education, and uh, places to donate. In the meantime, I want to make some recommendations for people uh, and channels to follow to stay updated. On YouTube, I would highly recommend Democracy Now! Uh, their coverage of what's been going on has been consistent and stellar. Al Jazeera is also great and equally consistent. You can't go wrong with a little Hasanabi, in my opinion. I think he's done an amazing job and there's tons of more people on separate okay. platforms just uh, fucking mentioning my ass next to Al Jazeera okay, and democracy that's now that's today, crazy everybody. it's taking me a while to upload uh, for a number of Pog reasons champion. but one of them that I want to mention now is that I've, it's been hard to kind of figure out how to cover what's going on in a way that somehow adds something new to the conversation I hope I've done that here in looking at these trends but maybe I haven't just let me know I'll have some more videos out soon uh, probably about this conflict let me know if there's anything Weeby says I like follow democracy covered. now Less for than gaming whatever money this yeah. video makes uh, I'm gonna donate me too. to a charity, probably one of them from the list. I'll update you on the community tab in a month. It's probably gonna get demonetized though, so I'll, I'll figure I'll figure something out. Maybe like a month's Patreon balance or something like that. But uh, yeah, we're all done. See you later. And thanks to Row. Your left is Zoomer CNN. I mean, I'm I'm glad that people are waking up to this reality. This is good. It's a objectively good thing. In all of the years of this kind of coverage, I've never. I, I've yet to see this level of support for Palestinians. It makes me very happy to see the generational divide, obviously. Uh, you know, it gives, me, uh, it gives me a tremendous amount of confidence. And uh, that, that divide, the generational divide is real.